Hello and welcome to A Slice of Pie, the weekly news show that we do on this channel. And I'm not in my bedroom. Hello everyone and welcome uh, yet again. Um, yeah, we're, we're actually going to start off by kind of talking about what's going on here. Uh, we're downstairs. Uh, one of the reasons that we're downstairs is because now there's room to have this stuff down here. Let's actually turn that on, add some uh, extra light in there. But we have room to be down here and room to stand up and room to put a desk right here, a uh, laptop over here, a screen, which we're going to try to throw images up on uh, over here. The only issue is the echo because it is actually pretty hefty. That being said, I do think through mixing, I should be able to at least reduce it. And it does actually kind of create a stage effect. And with the stage style lighting that we're doing, it might actually work out. I don't know. Uh, that being said, the reason also that we're using this is because there's more room for me to move around. You know, I can actually put my arms out and not hit things. I can back up. I can move forward. I have a green screen. It's just all around much better. And it's also a trial run of what will be the set for the future apartment in a couple of months. Um, that set is going to actually have a workbench involved. And yeah, so <laughs> let's just say having a house full of people who make YouTube, Twitch and other videos is an interesting thing. And I do actually like that I can put you guys at eye level and uh, yeah, everything's pretty cool. I mean, I, I like this set personally myself. So let's move on from that because I've actually been really productive. Um, I actually did another PC build. Um, so over there, I'm probably going to be able to have that edited up by Wednesday because the video's shot. I actually just have to do like some preliminary benchmarks and some sexy B-roll, but other than that, like it, it's a good, it's going to be a good video. So uh, that's actually the Scarlet build and it came before Nova because as you know, Nova's cables are on the way or well, haven't shown up yet. That being said, uh, the cables did actually, I got a notification saying that they're preparing for shipment. So I should actually see them soon, maybe even tomorrow at the earliest. So Nova should also be pretty much finished soon, which actually brings me to another video in the pipeline fx versus ryzen that's right we're going to be putting together a video comparing andy's top of the line from 10 years ago to andy's current top of the line before zen 2 comes out i am actually really excited to kind of compare these two um and i honestly like i've already done a little bit of testing because the custom cables aren't going to change all that much for the testing purposes Temperatures will remain the same. Um, that being said, it's a cool video. It's actually a really cool look at the past. And so I am looking forward to actually showing you guys that video when I can. Uh, I just don't know how long this video is going to take because I've never done a video of this type. So yeah, that one's also in the pipeline. Um, also a vlog is in the pipeline and this one's a real vlog. Um, if I had somebody to pan the camera to the left, you'd actually see a whole living room gaming setup. That's a whole vlog all on itself on how that's coming together. Uh, it's not finished yet because there's still uh, one more part that I need to do, but that's going to take a little while to do. And I still need to do the skating. And hopefully I'll be able to get some skating done because I've actually been, um, what's the word? Motivated. I've been motivated to do things because I haven't been locked up in my room. Um, I've been using this set in particular and I've just been doing, and it's awesome. Um, that being said, I still have to go up there to edit and that is because my better computer is up there and I don't want to move it. So that hits on pretty much everything going on with me, but I do want to give you guys kind of an update on something about Gamer Guts. Now, Gamer Guts is actually the streamer for MCPZ or MC Party Zone, as you guys may actually know. Many of you guys are her friends and my friends, respectively, from that server. That being said, if you are not in the loop, 
Gamers last MC Party Zone stream is this Friday. Actually, it should be ending by the time this video is going up. So you probably have missed it. I digress though. Uh, Gamer Guts' stream is the last 24 hour stream she's gonna be doing for that. Um, but I did talk to her and it does look like she's willing to do some new streams, except on her own this time. Um, and she's gonna do that under the Gamer Guts streaming channel. So yeah, look forward to that, I guess. I, I will probably talk about it on this channel more as she's now independent of Party Zone. And realistically, I just, I didn't try to overuse that connection. So with all that, that should be all the pie, all the pie tuber news. Let's get into the game news. Game news. Okay, let's actually start with some news that some people might actually not consider too good. Epic has snagged another exclusive. Uh, Borderlands 3 is going to be exclusive to the Epic's Game Store for six months, actually. Um, and I think at this point, we all pretty much need to admit it. The war against Steam is not going in Steam's favor right now. Now, Steam will definitely still be the place for indie games as long as they don't screw them too hard. But Epic does seem to be using those deep pockets to actually eat a lot of the cost that comes into running the server. So that being said, you know, it, it sucks that the platforms are fragmented. Uh, but at this point, like we can kick and scream all we want, but I don't think the Epic Game Launcher is going to fail like a lot of people hope. And I don't think the Epic Game Launcher is going away. So yeah, Borderlands 3, uh, a little bit of controversy around it. Personally, I'm still excited, but at the same time, I am the kind of person who doesn't pay into pay to win and I don't worry too much about other platforms since I already have like six or seven launchers. I just have to make sure that they're updated so that I can actually play the game. This one is a funny one. This is a little bit of a lighthearted story to kind of cheer you guys up after uh, talking about depressing stuff, uh, like Epic Games possibly eventually killing Steam. Uh, this little kid actually dressed up as Little Mac to meet Mike Tyson. Now, this is just awesome. The pose, the face, everything about this image is pretty sweet. Uh, and it's one of those things about the internet, you're just like, I love the world we live in. This image and several others are actually pretty fascinating. Um, at one point, due to the 8-bit's low pixel resolution and all that stuff, before The Legend of Zelda actually was released, a Japanese game magazine actually thought Link was a girl. Um, <laughs> it's vindicative of the time based off the art style, but at the same time, it is one of those things that's just like, this is, this is probably the first Linkle. This is the first time I've ever seen these images. And personally, I thought it was pretty neat. And so I'm including it in game news this week. Okay, Best Buy, Best Buy, Best Buy. Looks like Best Buy actually blew the lid off of three games in particular. We'll talk about the first two because they're very much possible. We've been hearing about them for a while. And then the last one was just like, wait, what? Persona 5 for Switch uh, was leaked by Best Buy. Um, we kind of figured this was coming. Joker's coming to Smash. Uh, usually characters who come to Smash have some sort of representation on the console at some point. So Persona being on Switch, not really that big of a surprise. Metroid Prime Trilogy for Switch also supposedly got leaked by Best Buy. Again, this is one of those things that we've known about, so the fact that it might be coming is not all that surprising. The last one though is A Link to the Past. Now this is particularly weird because traditionally on the Switch, retro games actually go through the Nintendo Switch online service, but for it to have an online real a listing on Best Buy, it actually has to be a re-release of the game or a recreation of the game. That could be interesting, but at the same time, rack your brain around this really quickly. That would mean we have a Link, uh, Link's Awakening, Cadence of Hyrule, this game, and possibly 
a game by um, Monolith that is also Zelda related. That is four Zelda games. That's way more Zelda than I expected. Now, it would be interesting though if Monolith is working on a remake of A Link to the Past because traditionally Monolith has only worked on 3D Zelda titles. So honestly, just crazy stuff all around uh, in this leak. Um, it might have been someone's very elaborate April Fool's joke, but at the same time, two out of the three are very likely. I can't tell what that is. Oh, Sniper Elite. <laughs> Sniper Elite 3 of all games is coming to the Nintendo Switch as well. Uh, this is one of those games that's kind of like, okay, that's all our game news uh, for today. Let's go ahead and get into the tech news because we actually have an interesting story in here that's actually our first one. So roll the tech news card. Wrong card. So, tech news, tech news, tech news, tech news. I have, this is getting old for me saying that, but still tech news. What's going on? Well, for the first time in years, Intel has beat AMD in the price department when this specific processor is on sale. Um, a channel named Science Tech, wait, what, what is Science Studio? The uh, YouTube channel named Science Studio was kind of recommended to me uh, last week, and they did a video on something called the i5-9400F. Now, we knew about the F processors, they're specifically the uh, Intel processors without integrated graphics. Problem is, they were about the same price as normal Intel processors. Well, they're not moving with that price range, and so retailers have actually already started to cut them down. And this one particular processor actually does come out ahead of the four core Ryzen processors for cost. That being said, you're still gonna be paying an Intel tax on your motherboard, so it's still gonna be a little bit more expensive, but for gaming, this ends up actually being a better deal. But it's just for gaming because, let's let's completely face it here, let me throw it up on the screen. Let's completely face it, um, Ryzen, is much, much better for multitasking and creators like myself. So yeah, cool to know. Um, link to the video in the description. Uh, his video is filled with asterisks like asterisk. Uh, but yeah, it, it, pretty cool video all around actually. Uh, and not one of the super big tech YouTubers. So pretty cool. Boop. Ah, yes, Lisa Sue, Lisa Sue, Lisa Sue, coming back on stage to show off yet again. Uh, Computex, right, is it Computex? Yes. Computex is actually going to be starting with AMD, which is actually the second <laughs> conference that AMD is starting this year, um, with Lisa Sue doing a keynote about Zen 2 or Ryzen 3000 processors and also graphics cards. Um, so, well, this might actually be what we are waiting for, where we get a full-blown reveal for the Ryzen 3000 and some details about Navi. I'm guessing this is actually going to match up because there's a couple of leaks that say around this time we should be seeing these products. That being said, though, we do have an interesting little leak. There have actually been filings, I think, with the FCC for Threadripper 3. Well, Threadripper 3 motherboards specifically. Uh, these new motherboards are pretty much guaranteeing that we're going to see a Zen 2 based Threadripper, which I can only imagine with the leaps and bounds AMD has made in that space, what we're going to get because Threadripper's like half server prosumer craziness. So, I, I, are we gonna get 124 cores? Uh, probably not, maybe, I don't know. Honestly, they could throw whatever they want into that thing and I'd believe it. Well, I still can't read that one. Oh, hey, we got something funny on the screen. <laughs> so, so this this one's actually a really funny thing. I kinda, um, I kinda wanted to include a segment where we, that we talk about something that's a joke and uh, this is a joke and it's not an April Fool's joke. Uh, the company Gilax um, is releasing an M.2 SSD with a heatsink and a heat pipe. 
Yeah, you heard me. Now, M.2 SSDs can get warm. That is true. But a heat pipe, it, it's just going from the PCB around the heat sink. Nothing about this design this says that this is gonna be a good idea. Um, the heat pipe's not going through anything, it's just surface level. And yeah, if you're just putting hot air onto another thermal transfer that's above the same thing that's trying to cool, you're not really doing anything. Now, M.2 slots are supposed to be getting some airflow from the case, but the way that they're placed in most motherboards actually kind of prohibits airflow. Not to mention, in many ITX motherboards and cases, uh, the M.2 slots on the backside, and there's not much room between the backside and the panel of the case. So, yeah, this thing is just kind of funny from a design perspective. Um, it looks eh. And putting a heat sink on an M.2 slot is not a bad thing. It's just the heat pipe, it makes it kind of useless. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, if you want to like, comment, subscribe. Um, we got a lot in the pipeline coming out on this channel. Lots to subscribe for, lots of tech and gaming stuff, and then even a little bit of skateboarding because I'm having a little bit of time for it. Um, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, let me know. Um, I know, I, I, before the comments about echoes, uh, yeah, I know there's an echo. And even worse, uh, if there actually is a comment and that is what it's about, that's kind of depressing actually, especially because I don't get comments. So, thank you guys again. Wolfie, out. Stay hey, I actually can use that.